Hi, everyone. Happy New Year. And uh, I'm Wen Hui from Spark. I'm very happy and excited to be here to share our projects with you. Just a quick introduction about us. This is our team. Uh, we have about 30 people and uh, two studios in Shanghai and in Singapore. Um, our founder is from London originally and came to Asia about 20 years ago to work on Clark Key, Singapore. So we have projects all over the world and we work on a wide range of projects from master planning, um, a large scale um, to a small scale projects like uh, interior designs and furniture design even. So you can see like we have all kinds of projects, commercial, residential, um, industrial, education, but we are very interested and passionate about animating the city. Uh, it could be about placing a large canopy and umbrella, we call it angels, over the streets of Clark Key in Singapore. Or it could be about creating a very crystalline sculpture in the heart of Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, which in this case is a new built um, flagship store for Sephora. It could be about flagship shops that are in pots that are hung in a large structure in the city in the heart of Shanghai. This is a Shanghai International Cruise Terminal, which animates the cityscape and riverfront. And it's also the winner of MIPIMS Asia Best Mixed Use Project in 2011. Or it could be about really fun clubhouses um, in this tallest twin towers in Penang, Malaysia which is about celebrating the views that you can have from these towers, these residential towers. I think animating the city and having fun could be also about um, interpreting the way we hang aircon units on the facade in the city. So these are colorful interpretations and envelopes that hide all the ugly aircon units of residential tower. And this is our latest completed project in the heart of Kuala Lumpur in Monkara, where you have these um, three residential and hotel towers that has this uh, pattern, which is supposed to be the client's thumbprint. So I'm excited today to talk about um, some of our projects that uses colors in different ways and different skills. So the first two projects I want to talk about, I want to share. Um, is about color being used in city regeneration. So Minhang Waterfront is a large um, city regeneration project in Shanghai city in China. So this area is a very old industrial estate where um, they have that is full of shoe factories, fabric um, factories, semiconductors, and it's also got a university. So it's got a nice mixture of education, and industrial vibes. So we've been commissioned to regenerate the landscaping and the public space um, of this area, Minhang, and to give it a new lease of life. So we have been working on the story of the entire master plan. So we thought that all these, with all these regeneration of industrial zone, um, the startup companies um, and the students, there's this nice vibe of communication so waves and frequency is a theme that we use in the project um, together with diatoms. Diatom is basically a single cell algae that you find in, um, in rivers. And this master plan has got these very nice uh, river running through the entire length. So you can see the language of uh, these frequency waves that weave through the city. So these are some early images of um, uh, of the master plan design. So these waves right, are basically um, pedestrian paths that link different zones activities in the parks and riverfront areas together. And what's fun about it is um, uh, we have assigned a color to one of the running tracks that tie the whole master plan together. And then we have three bridges that cross the river. So when the running track comes to the river, it sort of becomes a three-dimensional sculpture um, that becomes these iconic bridges. So those, those were drawings, uh, early drawings of our project. And this is what it looks like when it's completed. Um, this was taken recently. 
So in this case, the color is sort of like a wayfinding um, strategy within the city. You follow the red path and then it becomes this three dimensional sculpture, urban sculpture and highlight in the city. So from far away, it becomes a quite a large signage that signifies this area of the city is being revitalized. It's also quite a fun element. So you can see how the wave uh, converts from a two dimensional image to a three dimensional element. And then you have these diatom shapes that are cut out um, in the bridge. So it becomes a finer graphic play. So this is, uh, you can see, this is the large entire area of the mass plant and the river. And then this bridge is crossing the river. And this is the red path I was talking about. So you just follow the path and then it sort of joins and links the entire master plan. Together. So it brings everyone into the riverfront and you can enjoy the experience of moving through um, the city. Okay, so the next project I wanna talk about is GRID in Singapore. Um, it is of a smaller scale. It is a ret retrofit of an existing building. Um, so GRID, used to be called POMO. It's located in the civic district of Singapore and is surrounded by schools. So we wanted it to be an extension of the campus where students from surrounding schools can hang out here and um, basically have fun and then becomes more of a community center rather than a typical shopping mall. So GRID has gone through many renovations in its previous um, ownership and its earliest incarnation was a gaming center. So we wanted to bring some of these gaming vibes back to the, to the building. Um, as you can see on the left, this is what it used to look like. And the corner is dominated by this glass structure that is just an atrium. So when you enter, it's just space and there isn't much happening here. So what we wanted to do was to bring um, a lot of activities to the corner and also give it a new image. So what we did was to put a flagship shop right at the corner of this building. So you convert sort of like a atrium and a negative space into a positive occupation of a corner. So it also increases the value of this commercial building. So you can see here on the left, we did many studies on what the new corner could look like. So in this um, retrofitting project, it's about applying a graphic, a very graphic, colorful intervention to an existing gray building to uplift and give it a new list of life. And then uh, we also did studies on the ki different kinds of activities the students could have in this building. And it went into a series of graphic vignettes of representation of activities that could happen here. So you could see, so it extends to every single space, even the corridor leading to the washrooms and um, even the wash, the circulation spaces like the staircases, uh, even underneath the escalator and how the washrooms could be redefined. So these are one of the early images where you see a staircase down to the base and then it could be converted into a performance area with uh, surrounding cafes looking down and engaging with the activities. We also wanted um, this graphic gesture to be about extending the city into the building. So the building gets flipped inside out. It's almost like it's public space within the building. So it's represented by these um, traffic graphic, colorful traffic um, graphic patterns on the floor. So, I'll show you, this is like before and after. So on the left is what it looked like, it used to look like. On the right is our imagination of the space. So this is uh, one of the entrances and central areas, the project. And this is what it looks like right now. Um, this was taken recently of the constructed grid. Right now, shops are occupying um, the structure. So if you go there right now, it is already quite different from here. Lots of people hang out in these balconies and areas. So you can actually see the activities on the facade of the building. So this is the entrance. 
This is what it looks like in the daytime. And the social stairs constructed. Now the second uh, retrofit project I want to talk about is located in Bangkok. It's called FIFA. FIFA means light in the city. So it is a, um, a charity project by TMB Bank um, to create this education center for slum children where they can learn life skills um, related to art, uh, like for example, singing or music, um, drawing, dancing, so they engaged us. So this is also a charity project for us. Oh, look, Nippon Paint. So this um, two shop houses right next to Nippon Paint um, were combined and converted into this free education center for the slum children. So we were engaged um, together with the client and the kids from the community. We held a workshop, um, engage with them, find out what they would like to have, get them to draw their ideas. And they, some of the ideas that came from the workshop were so interesting, like they wanted to have a lot of colors in this new school of theirs, and they wanted to have the name of the building on the facade. So we thought these were great. So it's our job to interpret these children's ideas into the outcome. So this is what it looks like, finished. Um, the interesting part about this project is that everything new and inserted into the old building is in a color. In this case, yellow. We call it the yellow brick road. So the kids follow this path of growth and development, and then it combines all the different levels um, of the building. So each floor is of a certain class. Say at the top floor is dance class, and the second floor is art class. Third floor is the library. So every zone, every room has got its own color but the combining uh, circulation is always in yellow. So it becomes an interior wayfinding that leads people to their various destinations. And then we also have these uh, art exhibition box, which is a sculpture within the space. So you can see um, diagrams we produce. It's consistent with the idea. So right now, every weekend, um, TMB, TMB Bank staff will volunteer at this place to teach the kids the life skills. So it's become a great community um, hangout place. All right, everyone, thank you for listening. I guess the key takeaway for me is, um, and for you guys, is that every project is different. Every brief, every environment, every uh, issue or problem that you encounter is different. So don't apply a formula to your design. Don't repeat what you have done for the previous project to the next one. Just deal with it as though it's on a fresh new page. Challenge yourself. And then at Spark, we always um, tell ourselves there are no rules, especially in the early conceptual stages. There are really no rules. Just go wild and see what you come up with. And Importantly, there must be a story to reason or reason to um, your designs. And if you use colors, the colors should really support your story or concept to make it stronger. So everything will come together in one unified um, goal, right? And most of all, um, have fun while doing it. Thank you.